Hi and welcome to our video on castration. There are two techniques for castrating a colt. The first is when the colt is given a general anaesthetic and laid on the ground and the testicles removed. The second technique is called a standing castration which we like to use at Exclusively Equine. Firstly we have to check the colt's temperament to make sure it will tolerate having the standing castration procedure done. And then the second is to make sure that the testicles are in a position that can't be taken back into the abdomen. Once these are assessed, we then listen to the colt's heart rate to rule out any murmurs or any physiological problems that could arise. And then we have a visual check to make sure there are two testicles in the scrotum. And then we also give a physical palpation. So we feel to make sure those testicles are okay and that there's no abdomen, uh, intestines or things like that included with the testicles. Once that is done, we then use a heavy sedation and this takes about 30 seconds to take effect. This allows the procedure to be done safely. Once the sedation is working, we then give a quick general scrub with a disinfectant into the area to just start the cleaning process. And we then will flick some water onto the legs as we do this to make sure that the colt isn't hypersensitive in the back legs. As you can see from our position, it is a little bit tricky to do a standing castration. So we flick the water up, making sure that the colt doesn't resent anything in that area. Once the scrub has been performed, we then grab some local anaesthetic and place that into the testicles and the scrotum so the colt doesn't resent being cut. Placement of the local anaesthetic is extremely important and we just warn that the clients that we are going to place the local anaesthetic as sometimes the colts can kick out as it does sting a little. As you can see, this colt just has a little tail flick when we place the needle in. So he really doesn't mind too much. Placement of the local anaesthetic is extremely important. So we do take our time to make sure we have placed it correctly. And as you can see, we're doing this on a grassed area and making sure that the colt is fully weight bearing on both hind legs, as this limits the ability for them to kick. It gives us warning. As you can see, we stand out of the kicking arc so that we're not going to be in the way if the colt does decide to kick. You can see when I change the direction of the needle, the colt gives a little flick with his tail, which indicates it is stinging him a little. But as you can see, he's tolerating it really well. Once the local anaesthetic is placed and we are comfortable with the placement of that, we give it a good few minutes to take effect. And once, while that's taking effect, we then give a more thorough scrub with a disinfectant agent. The disinfectant agent we use needs to be in contact with the skin to disinfect for some time. So we do like to give a good thorough scrub now that we've given, put the local anaesthetic in. After a certain amount of time for the local to work, we then prepare for the surgery. We have a pre-sterilised castration kit, which includes a few tools. We have big emasculator clamps. We have a variety of clamps, scissors, and forceps as well, just in case something happens during the procedure. It is pre-sterilised and ready to go. We also use a sterile scalpel blade each castration and we use sterilized gloves. This limits the amount of infection and bacteria that we enter into the site. The gloves are put on aseptically so the gloves are not touched with your germy hands. This is the technique being used here with the gloves being opened and not being touched and contaminated. Once the gloves are placed it is then time to get ready for the surgery. Again, before we start the surgery, we'll make sure the horse is standing correctly. And we've chosen an area where there's no obstacles. There's no people standing around, there's no logs, there's no buckets, just in case the colt stumbles and is unable to stand up. So choosing an area that is clear is fantastic. Before we cut, we also make sure that the colt is still sedated correctly. As you can see, this colt has a nice wide stance 
and is really not too fussed about what is going on. So the scrotum is grabbed and the testicle is placed in the scrotum and a nice forceful cut is used and that is what the cult is resenting there as we pull the testicle through the cut. So just visualising and then once the testicle is exteriorised, meaning it is removed from the scrotum, we then make another incision into the testicle to remove the parts of the testicle so we can visualise that we have removed the entire testicle. So once this is removed, we then grab our emasculators, which are a large clamp device. As you can see, we open them, we place them above the testicle, making sure the colt is standing correctly. As you can see, he was a little bit wobbly there. So we grab the testicle again, we place the clamps above the testicle, where the cremaster muscle, the nerves, veins and arteries are located. The clamp is placed tightly and this allows a clot to form and prevents the horse from bleeding to death. Once the clamp is placed tightly, we then remove the testicle and then we place clamps to make sure that we can keep an eye on the stump from where the testicle has been removed to make sure there isn't excessive bleeding. So the testicle is removed. Once the testicle is removed, we visualise to make sure all of the testicle is included, including the proud stone or the head of the epididymis, which is where the testosterone is produced. So we also visualise, allow the client to visualise if they're up to it. We show them the anatomy of the testicle so that they're confident we've removed the entire testicle as well. So once that the clamps have been on for a long period of time, we then grab some forceps to hold the stump and then it's time to do the other side of the scrotum. So the other testicle is placed into the scrotum and an incision is made, the testicles exteriorized and we then remove the same way as the first testicle. As these clamps are removed we're making sure there is no excessive bleeding. If that is the case we then can apply a suture to prevent excessive bleeding. Once we're happy the clamps are taken off and then the second testicle is removed. Once the second testicle has been removed we then give a quick disinfectant and we then are finished the procedure. So the second testicle has been removed and a disinfectant or sterilization there is placed. We then apply some chloramide spray to prevent any flies and infection entering our incision site and the colt is now deemed a gelding. Once the pink spray has been applied, we then give the now gelding a short acting tetanus if it's not up to date. We then cover it also with a shot of long acting penicillin. However, this only takes effect for about 48 hours, but it prevents any dirt or debris flicking into the site causing infection. So now the procedure is completed and the two needles, the tetanus antitoxin, given into the muscle. As you can see, the colt is resenting the needles more so than the procedure. So it is extremely important to have the right sedation on board. So tetanus antitoxin and then a long-acting penicillin is given. And again, as you can see, the colt is the gelding is now not wanting the needle rather than his testicles being removed. So having that space for safety is extremely important. So I'm just giving a little neck twitch and then the shot of penicillin and the procedure is now complete. So now it's important for the owners to monitor for any swelling or anything hanging from the incision sites.